Well, I'm back at the Conrad Murray trial. Let's take a look at some more interviews. This is a start to, for the doctors to be on uh, watch so that this doesn't happen to somebody else's child. But to see of the witness can be cut out. Right, you shall hear. He's got a loud voice. I wanted to ask you something else, but I'll wait just a moment. Now, about the right to speak and wisdom. Is he talking something biblical? Yeah, okay. Um, well, my new documentary is called Life After Michael. Do you have any thoughts about Life After Michael is going to be like? Wow. Hopefully it will be peace. Hopefully we will learn from this death to love and be at peace and try to heal the world. Very nicely put, thank you. Had a love for kids. I mean, it really, you know, just like you know, you got. Some guys out there just love Ferraris to death or whatever. I mean, you know, Michael loved kids, and then that's a good thing. And I think he's in a better place now. You know, I mean, you know, I think, you know, we put on this earth for a reason. And, you know, you know, that was just Michael's calling. I mean, to just care about people, you know, mainly kids and animals and stuff like that. He's you know, a, a good person. And then, you know, in addition to that, he had great music. You know, I've been a fan ever since when I was a kid. So. I'm here for Michael. Thank you. What's your name? I'm Jason. And uh, where do you live? Uh, I live in Orange County, but I'm originally from Chicago. Oh. What do you do for a living? I'm a photographer. Nice. Yeah. And, and you, are, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm not working right now. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. One man said that they got an order to move us from this place. Do you feel like a rebel? A revolutionary? Yeah. Like they afraid us yeah. because we know the truth, that's why. And what is the truth? That the secret government killed Michael. It's conspiracy. It's conspiracy. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. Conspiracy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Michael was coming out, you know, and he, he's done it from the beginning. Uh, talking about the government and the Illuminati, like, um, and they don't care about us. There's an all seeing eye. He did it with the Black Panther dance in Black or White. Uh, the video for Leave Me Alone has a lot of symbolism of all that stuff. Uh, the Dangerous album cover, the blood on the dance floor, um, it symbolizes behind them. It's supposed to be the Twin Towers, and it was the same moon from that same night. A lot of people say that oh my Michael, God, yeah, that Michael was very, um, that he was very psychic. Like he knew a lot of what was going on. And the world that Michael's standing in versus the world on the marble floor is completely different. It shows pyramids and all that uh, kind of stuff, and the masons and all that. In all their buildings, they have marble floor. And Michael had, uh, Michael had it on the Blood on the Dance Floor uh, CD cover, and also in his uh, short film, Ghost. The, uh, the floor is marbleized and everything is black, is checkered, is black and white. So, um, and that's the other thing he was gonna do too with the This Is It concert, is he was gonna talk even more about you know the dangers of the system, how they want to destroy people who put the truth out there, and he was gonna talk more about the environmental issues as well. Do you think any of the, uh, the secret government are like are around here now? Um, yeah, we think so. We've encountered some uh, nasty people who shout out things about Michael. And I know that certain of the Jackson members uh, feel the same. Uh, Latoya knows about it. Um, someone told me that one time Janet was wearing a Illuminati necklace, so it was like her own silent protest. And my yellow sign that I have over here 
I had made, uh, this is a copy, I made one for the preliminary hearing and Catherine uh, Jackson had um, the driver Jay take it. So there's actually a YouTube video on it. Really? Yeah. So they had Could you read it one. to me while I'm getting a shot of it? Uh, Basically, it's, um, all these people are involved. Conrad Murray is the fall guy for all these people. So it's Murray, Randy Phillips, John Bronco, John McClain, Tommy Matola, Tom Sennett, A.G. Sony, Frank DeLeo, and Tomei Tomei. Now Frank DeLeo already has gotten his own, you know? Anybody who stands up for the rights of human beings and they talk against the government are automatically killed by the system. Good, good thoughts. Mm -hmm. Majestic, how are you doing? I'm not doing good today, but I want to uh, introduce you to, to Sarah. No, Hi. Sarah. Hi, Larry. Where are you from, she Sarah? So Colorado. And did you just she come here so, for this? So yes, loyal. I'm here for my a, a loyal fan. My and fan. the Jackson with, family, the whole She's Jackson. been here all this time with us. She, yep. she was all through the trial with yep. Michael. We can depend on her. Yep. She is so, so loyal. Yep. And I'm so glad to have her here. Yep. I'm introducing to everybody while she's here yep. in the family. Are you going to get a singing career going with her? Huh? What? Are you going to manage her singing career? Oh, she can't sing. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you, Sarah. <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. But I have you on Facebook, so I'll keep you here. Okay, we're, cool. We're on there. Yes, yep. how are you? Good. 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 So, so you met Michael? I met Michael on my 16th birthday. He was, let's see, he's six months older than I am. So um, I grew up with Michael, like, you know, knowing him. I grew up in the valley. My friends, the San Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley. My friends, we all went to school with together with them. I knew them hanging out at the park, just walking my dog. And, and so. uh, any impressions you had of any of the Jacksons? Well, I spent a little time with Latoya when we were young, and um, was she a genuine person or sweet well, and shy? Sweet and shy. Yeah, and um, you know, I I kind of uh, felt like she needed friends. She hung out with me and a girlfriend of mine, and um, asked if we wanted to meet Michael, and she introduced us. Well, what, what were the circumstances of how you got together? Um, my best friend was Jehovah's Witness, and they, it was at a Jehovah's Witness function. And I went with my girlfriend, and we were hanging out. Uh, you know, and that's when we first met with Toya. <laughs> From the words of my rowing, oh my God, cry in the daytime, thou hearest not, and in the night. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> All tight. But, but I was also, I work in Westwood, and I saw the, the day Michael died, the helicopters heard the sirens. We were looking at our windows of the office building, and I knew something horrible had happened, and that, you know, it was, I don't know, just gave us chills, those of us in the office. And when we found out it was Michael, it was devastating. Uh, I went there too later in the day, around six or seven, and people had gathered from all over by then. It was really quite a scene. It was amazing to, I mean, it's shocking, it's shocking. And um, I, I always believed in Michael's innocence. I always felt um, he was just sweet and, and childlike and didn't really get to grow up with the kind of childhood that kids deserved and tough but, father. But he met nice kids in his childhood, <laughs> like you. <laughs> yes, but how close could he get, really? Yeah. How close could he get? What Was there a thing going on when you met him, like you're a superstar and it's, was it like a, ja a heightened moment? It was very sweet. He came out of the, you know, car and shook hands with the, uh, my girlfriend and I and talked with us for a few minutes. Um, you know, very sweet. Very, very sweet. Did, did you think his voice was normal or high or...? He, high. High and soft. Um, but it was okay. It wasn't ab abnormal really, huh? No. I mean, how else could he sing the way he sang? And I love him. I just absolutely love him. He, That'll never go away. He talks about how a number of people in his family were tenors and had the high voices, which was a beautiful voice. And uh, and was, was he? how was he dressed when you saw him? Um, 
he was dressed casual. He was casual. Like t-shirt and jeans or something? No, like a pair of pants. A pair of pants and a, and a, and a shirt. He wasn't dressed uh, exceptionally unusual at all. I suppose when he went out, he always dressed dressed up, but maybe just at home, or maybe when he was younger, he when didn't When he was younger, I don't think he did. This was before. Uh -huh. yeah. this, this is around when? Well, let's D see. Don't date yourself now. When we were 16, we, Michael and I were both 16. So here. Would you like to say anything else about Michael? Um, I saw the movie. Um, this is this it. This is it, and I saw it twice. Um, I encourage friends who weren't even fans of Michael necessarily to watch it, to see it, so that they can get a different perspective, really, than what the media talks about, to actually see him for themselves. See his creative method and the true spirit. Unbelievable creativity, um, aware and alert and just spot on. Knows what he wanted, the physical abilities he had to dance, all the things that he was accomplishing in creating the tour. Um, you know, th this particular concert, it was it was spectacular. It's it's really something that this film that wasn't meant to be a film has so helped to redeem his reputation because when people see it they realize he was a wonderful person I made a mistake I think you know I, I, I say that the the media kind of bullied uh, Michael and made fun of him and then the general public kind of made fun of him some too just because it was fun to make fun of his nose or whatever but he was taken advantage of and he, he was a wonderful artist amazing artist and I, I, I think he was a good person. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'll uh, stand by. Well, hi, and you are? Yvonne Francis. And why are you here today? I'm here to support the Jackson family and to fight for justice for Michael. You know, I stand out here on a daily basis, and I see people pass by and say, he was a molester, he was a drug addict. You know what I mean? The media has put this out there and that's a great injustice. You know what I mean? To that killed the spirit. Oh yes. Yes. I think he 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 died a long time ago. After the trial, you know, Conrad Murray finished the job and we buried him. Well, hi, it's Larry Nimmer. I'm out here at the Elks Club. What city are we in? Uh, we're in uh, Playa del Rey. And um, I met this gentleman at a swing dance class and demonstration and uh, brought up the Conrad Murray trial. And you made a good point. You said you're from the corporate world and seeing this is it, you got a whole new idea of Michael, how he was a good leader and creative. And what, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, what impressed me was how he got what he wanted in such a gentle way that yeah, he, huh. he didn't demand, he just persuaded. And uh, I think he got so much, he, he was so respected that he was able to do that. And the, and the people performing for him wanted to please him. And uh, uh, so that he didn't have to be uh, it's a so tyrant, it's tyrannical in, in his leadership style. You, you particularly appreciated from his leadership style. Did you also kind of get a good emotional or person feeling from him? Uh, from the movie? From Michael. I mean, you got a from good Michael. feeling from Yeah, Michael. I had a totally different opinion of him, which, which I respect for his talent and for his uh, creativity and uh, for his, basically his, the way he had of getting what he wanted, his leadership, I, I would call it leadership style. Okay, Larry Nimmer with his iPhone here at the Elks Club in downtown Playa del Rey, Los Angeles. Oh, okay. okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Are you having a good time? <laughs> front of the cafeteria here at the courthouse and just reflecting a little bit on being in the courtroom earlier today I'm really impressed with how the judge runs the show he really keeps it moving he seems to be fair he's concise has some humor now and then uh, great job I'm also very impressed with the prosecution Waldron he's got his thing together and he doesn't inject any personality that 
might turn him off and wants to win the, the jurors over by his sincere, straightforward, uh, non-grandiose method. Uh, the defense, uh, Flanagan sometimes turns me off, how he's kind of whiny and like, don't you, shouldn't you, dun, dun, dun. And I've been on the stand and had people do that to me. I didn't particularly like that. I don't know how well that works, but in some cases I guess it might. Um, turn off seems pretty good, pretty straightforward. Um, the sheriffs are all fun to watch. They're all kind of, okay, row number three, you will be first to leave, go ahead, uh, row number three. And it's the Jackson family. And, and then when they walk down the hallway, I noticed one group was walking really slow. And I looked over and Catherine Jackson was in the middle of them, so they were all kind of matching her pace. And she, it might have been they were walking slow anyway. I think she's an 81 or something year old lady and she's like running an empire and raising the most important kids in the world. Although every kid's the most important kid in the world. But <laughs> the most, some of the most looked at kids in the world. So it's very cool what she's doing and I will grant her a wish to walk down the courtroom corridor any speed she would like. Uh, what other impressions do I have? Well, the, the fans are so excited. We, we go to this uh, lottery in the morning, which is right behind me here. You get here, you get here by 7.20, you can get a ticket, and then they'll call numbers, and two-thirds of us got a seat in the courtroom today, and today is October 20th, 2011. Uh, it's great seeing other MJ-related people, just random people show up from all over the world because they love the guy, Michael Jackson. I feel very happy to have jumped on the Michael back Michael Jackson bandwagon as of 2005 when I was hired by his defense team to make a video tour of Neverland Ranch for use at the trial. That was my lucky day. I'm feeling pretty good. I got some good interviews. I'm going to go stretch at home. And that's it from the downtown courthouse, Conrad Murray hearings. Not the hearings, Nimrod. It's the trial. What are you smiling about? Michael died and Conrad Murray messed things up and he's messed up himself, so it's not much to smile about. Alternate take. So that's it for now. My name is Larry Nimmer. I'm the guy on the left having lunch in Michael Jackson's kitchen. I was part of the Jackson defense team in my capacity as a documentary filmmaker and legal video specialist. I spent many days videotaping inside Michael Jackson's Neverland estate, and I spent two days on the witness stand, presenting and narrating my original video footage for the jury, footage that will be seen outside the courtroom for the first time in this documentary. For the first time, you'll see the sheriffs meeting the accuser. What he has done to you, okay? He's the bad person, not you. And you'll hear Jackson's accuser telling a story of molestation. Hey, he grabbed you. <coughs> he grabbed you? Yeah. Where did he grab you at? My private area. He grabbed you in your private area? Sheriff's Department. You'll see an army of sheriffs raiding Jackson's personal living quarters at Neverland Ranch. You'll meet the mother of the accuser. Where were they when I had to walk about three hours to get to the doctors for my children and now all of a sudden they're caring and concerned because Michael Jackson. You'll view outtakes from the Martin Bashir documentary. I would never do that. I would slit my wrist before I would hurt. You'll see an exclusive interview with Jackson attorney Tom Messero. This was not the kind of situation that Michael Jackson belongs in. He's extremely sensitive, very gentle, very childlike. And you'll meet jury foreman Paul Rodriguez. We felt that Michael was a, still a kid in a man's body. Michael's defense team hired me to create a Neverland tour video to counter the unsavory impression created by footage shot by the Santa Barbara County Sheriffs, who deployed over 70 officers for a surprise raid of Neverland Ranch.